days ago it rained and the rain has washed all this sediment down into the main river. I can't see the rocks in here, that's the problem, that's how that got broken. And if I carry on fishing here, I'm going to break this harpoon too, then there's no chance of a fish supper. So I think the best bet is to get in my canoe and try something a little bit different. My canoe is a silent platform, taking me closer to the fish. It's now about stalking, not just waiting. And it takes total concentration. Got one. This is far from fishing as we know it today. To succeed, I have to make a direct hit, and after six hours, I'm beginning to get the hang of it. With two fish for supper, my journey is almost complete and I've gained new insights into our hunter-gatherer past. Well, I had some luck. Well done, yeah, it's fantastic. But, so we've got a couple of fish. One's a trout, what's the, what's the other? There's a chub, I think. Let's right. have a look, a bit look. Oh. That's gone. And I've lost one barb off this one as well. So they're fairly fragile. They're very fragile. But what I am impressed with is how well the binding has held up and the resin coating has done a really good job. Look, of There's so that no together. sign of cracking or anything, has it? No, and I've used a rawhide binding and that will absorb water and so it will swell. But all I have to do is put that over the fire and heat it and that will repair that. But I saw much bigger fish, but I'm afraid my aim isn't as good as it should be. And um, so I, I managed to miss those. Well, it's just remarkable with milky water that you should have this uh, success. Yeah, it was very milky water. But it just shows how, you know, a day's rain can spoil your food supply. Yes, that's a, that's a lesson, isn't it? Yeah. How have you got on? Well, uh, the, the meadows that you pointed out to me was really quite remarkable. Um, I'd say half the plants produced something edible. <laughs> uh, really quite uh, amazingly productive. Uh, above all, it had these aromatic plants. Uh, not just uh, the, uh, the majorums, but also these thymes, really nice, very fragrant uh, uh, smelling thymes. Smell those. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? Really, really you really good. Want to dry that and put it with some, that's some right. meat, don't you? And uh, for salads, we've got the salad burnet, of course, the, yeah. uh, the same as we get in Britain, and uh, a bit chewy at this time of year. It's very chewy at this time of year. And then, of course, the, the thing that people often forget about, the, the leaves of poppy, a bit hairy, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, a very distinctive flavour. I can't relate it to anything else at all. It's a flavour all of its own. I don't know how you describe that. It's no, but it's nice. It is a nice flavour. Yeah, the hair's on problem. It's crunchy. It's, it is. It's, it's very good. Gordon, I guess we could steam these fish over time if we wanted to, but they're such nice fish. I thought I'd just cook them straight over the fire. Right. It's nice it's and a, fresh. Yeah, they're lovely and fresh. And I think just a very simple means of cooking them 
will be ideal. I'm not gutting the fist, you see. They look nice. They look good, don't they? Yeah. I'll fix this spear up a little bit. When I've been spear fishing with Aboriginals, the other thing that they do is that they will straighten their spear like this each day. In fact, they say that a, a spear needs to be taught to be straight every day. Really? So it's yeah. an ongoing process? It's an ongoing process. And even though this stick's a year old, you can still start to straighten it a bit. The thing about fishes such as trout is that they're rich in fat, they're an oily fish. The oil they contain is very rich in these omega-3 fatty acids that we have uh, all too few of, uh, all too little of in our present day diet. And these omega-3 fatty acids are very important for brain formation in infants, so pregnant mums should make sure they have plenty of these sorts of uh, foods, and brain maintenance generally. The thing about the Mesolithic people is that they had a pretty good diet, the omega-3, far better than what we get today. Here you go, Gordon. Fresh from the river. I like this simple way of cooking things in their natural wrappings. With all the oil retained. All the oil retained, and there's a lot of oil in this area here around the belly. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's just so juicy. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> this is really the best fish I've ever, ever tried. Well, that's high praise indeed. <laughs> Very nice. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Wetland habitats were once incredibly important for our ancestors. In those environments, they found an abundance of food and other resources. One of the most frustrating things for us has been trying to picture what those wetlands look like because over the past few thousand years the agricultural and industrial processes have so transformed our waterways as to make it almost impossible to imagine how they once were. I think we've lost a respect for one of the most elemental and important forces in our lives, water. Not just fish and things to eat, but also spiritual renewal and the, the sense of enjoyment that comes from paddling down a river or sitting beside a waterfall and just contemplating nature. Somewhere along the way, I think we're going to have to change the way we live. And opening our hearts to some of the experiences of the past may be part of the key. food on offer next Wednesday at 8. And can the right diet keep us sexy? Vic Reeves and his wife attempt to find out in The Truth About Food tomorrow night at 9 here on BBC Two. <laughs>